With Stereovision, it is possible to extract a 3D structure for scene, provided that there is sufficient texture. What you are looking at now is a 3D point cloud generated from two stereo images. Discussed in this video are different options available on Boost CV for finding and configuring stereo disparity calculations. An understanding of stereo image processing is assumed, but you can get the basic idea even with a minimal background. A point gray Bumblebee 2 camera was used to collect these stereo images, but a regular webcam can also be used. In this application, you can view the original camera images. Here is the left image, and here is the right image. Notice the slight change in perspective when going from the left to right image. This change in perspective is what allows the scene's 3D structure to be extracted. Here is a disparity image. In this representation, warmer colors indicate that a pixel is closer, while cooler colors indicate that it is farther away. Going back to the original view, you can see that this table, part of the table here, is closer and so is the floor, while the wall in the background is farther away. Black typically indicates that no correlation was found in the image at that point. However, it could also mean that it has a disparity of zero. To remove this ambiguity, you can click here. However, I like the visual appearance of the image with black and valid pixels more. Stereo disparity is found by matching rectangular regions in the left and right image. The matching region size can be increased or decreased. Larger regions tend to produce smoother results but are less accurate, particularly at object edges, as I'll demonstrate right now. First, let's increase the size of the region. As you can see, each time I increase the region size, it gets a bit smoother. However, let's take a look at this chair leg right here. Notice how thick it is. Switching back to the original point of view, um, you can see that the chair leg is much thinner. Disparity, original image. Now let's go back to the disparity again. So you can fix this by decreasing the radius size. However, you can see um, that the image is now much noisier and not as smooth as it was before, but it's not exaggerating the size of the chair leg anymore. Let's change it to the 3D view again. However, this looks a bit noisy, so let's increase the size of the region radius to 4. And that looks a bit better. So. By clicking and dragging on the image, you can move the camera to the right, to the left, up, and down. You can zoom in and out by increasing the range. And you can also tilt the camera up and down. And then to return to the original view, simply click on the home button. You're probably getting sick of looking at this chair, so let's take a look at a different image. Here's a sundial outside. Um, if you move the camera around, you might notice that behind objects it's always white, um, which in this case means that um, there's no 3D information behind the object, which makes sense because um, a stereo camera cannot uh, generate a model for what it cannot see. To get a better idea of what this looks like, let's uh, give it a top-down point of view. So that involves tilting the camera and zooming out. So you can see the shadow behind the sundial very clearly right here. And um, there are also some shadows behind the trees and bushes. All the stuff around here is known as stereo smear. The farther away um, you are from a stereo camera, the less accurate it can estimate the range. So what are all these buttons on the left? Well, you can use them to change the way that the image is processed. Um, region radius we've already discussed. Max error is the maximum difference per pixel allowed between the region in the left image and the region in the right image. So if you set it down to a smaller value, say 10, 
it'll be uh, much less tolerant and should um, filter out a lot of these pixels. So you can see that some of the stereo smear is gone, but also a lot of the valid uh, matches are gone too. That's a general problem. The more noise you eliminate, the more signal you also eliminate. Let's go back to 30. Um, Subpixel processing allows it to estimate the range um, and floating point values, not just integer values. So if I turn it off, you can see that the disparity is now only computed at discrete points. Let's make it even clearer. And then if I turn subpixel back on, it becomes much smoother again. Texture refers to a filter that tries to remove regions which are ambiguous, that are caused by repeated textures in the image. When that happens, it's hard to find a distinct unambiguous correlation. If I increase the number, it will become less tolerant. So let's see what happens if I set to 0 0.5. Now, it filter out a lot of noise, but also filter out a lot of the legitimate image. Let's go back to 0 0.1. Reverse refers to reverse correlation. So typically you go from the left image to the right image. However, you can also go from the right image to the left image. And if you have the true uh, matching disparity, you should come up with the same result from left to right and right to left. So this refers to the tolerance in pixels. If I set to zero, it has to be a perfect match. You can see I filtered out some of the objects around here and left a decent number of pixels remaining. Image scale uh, scales the image input image up and down. So if I set it to 0 0.5, I'll be processing a much smaller image and it'll be much faster. A trick to also process a larger disparity is to decrease the size of the image. This is useful since um, processing um, stereo images like this is very computationally expensive. Let's try going to a different image. Here's one of some stones. and So here's the left point of view, and let's go back to the full image size. Let's say I didn't want to process these bushes. So let's take a look at the disparity image. Oh, And to process these rocks close up, I need to increase the size of the max disparity because they're so close to the camera. Set so to 150. And you can see now it's able to resolve them. But I don't want to deal with these and it's wasting CPU cycles just to consider them. So let's set the uh, minimum disparity to 20. And you can see that a lot of the background got reduced. Let's remove some more. Okay, so pretty much all those bushes are gone now. And I'm just getting a model of these stones. I can do the same thing by decreasing the max disparity. And let's increase the min disparity some more. Okay. Let's bring it back to the way it was before. And put 250. So far, all the processing has been using a five region algorithm. Uh, that algorithm was described in a 2002 paper, Real-Time Correlation-Based Stereo Vision with Reduced Border Errors, and is considered a state-of-the-art dense stereo processing algorithm. However, there are other ones provided, such as a single region one. This algorithm is a bit faster, however, it has more noise. For example, you can see all this red here, uh, where it should be blue. That's all noise. Let's go back to the five region. And in general, the five region produces better results. However, if you want to turn off all error checking and just use a single region, the fastest is the ba region basic. Which you can see is a lot noisier. However, it is also a bit faster. Let's take a look at the 3D view. And let's go back to the home view. So you can see there's a lot of noise, but faster. Um, less noise, but a bit slower, and then the best, but also the slowest.
For more information on um, these examples and how to program them, uh, see Booth CV's website.